Hello, welcome to Student Champions, What's Their Secret? Today we're continuing with the theme, Champions Never Give Up. In the last episode, we watched the video, the testimony of a young lady who dropped out of university and graduated after 10 years. In other words, it took her 10 years to complete a four-year degree program. If you haven't watched that video, I'll encourage you to do so. It's on YouTube. Champions Never Give Up, part one. Today, I'm delighted that this young lady, Amaka, is here to tell her story. Let's listen attentively to this interview with her. Hey, yes, thank you very much. Amaka, for coming on this program, your very first guest on this program, and um, thanks for your willingness to share your story with the world. You know, we watched your video of your, your church graduation last week, and every time I watched that video, it brought tears to my eyes. It's very moving, and um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who felt those emotions. So I thought it would be a good idea for you, because many people want to find out what happened to you, you know, um, want to hear more about your student journey. And because um, there are many people out there who may find themselves in similar situations. I'm sure with this COVID, maybe some people probably would have given up along the way. Mm -hmm. And um, so, because there are lots of mental health issues, you know, that have been created by this pandemic. So I thought you to be a good opportunity to hear your story and take us through your journey. When did you first enter the university to start your degree program? And why did you drop out? Right. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate this. I will try my best to do justice, <laughs> to tell my story. I'm still learning, still processing yeah. what happened. But uh, I started uh, in the fall of 2011. Uh, I remember still remember my first morning commuting to school. My entire first year was a haze. Um, and I remember specifically, you know, walking into university and just walking through the halls of this massive campus, feeling like a grain of sand <laughs> at a beach. Uh, in many ways, I was unprepared uh, completely for university. Mentally, I was very scattered. I didn't have the skills, the grip, the healthy coping mechanisms that I needed to function as a university student. Uh, my time management skills in particular were very poor. Um, you know, things I could get away with in high school, like pulling an all-nighter, like, you know, the night before the paper is due and still doing well. I, I couldn't do that here. Um, and I, I remember I got my first C on a paper and my whole world flipped out upside down. Uh, but I think what really got me though was not that it was I was I was failing, but it wasn't due to a lack of effort. Um, I really tried. I tried so hard. You know, I would sit at my desk for hours trying to write an essay, and it, it wouldn't work. It felt like the tap up here was just shut off. Um, I would start my assignments. I couldn't complete them. I couldn't submit them, so I couldn't pass my classes. Um, you know, at first I was still showing up to class, still doing the readings. Uh, still engaging in class discussions, which my professors loved, um, but I couldn't complete my assignments, and and uh, and that failure began to fester. Uh, I began to spiral as I watched myself fail over and over again, no matter how hard I tried. Um, and I was too ashamed to ask for help. I couldn't even, you know, look at my transcript. At one point, it was peppered with every letter grade possible. I'm sure if I could have gotten a G, I would have gotten that too. You know. Uh, I felt so powerless and, and I, so I went from being unable to complete my assignments to not being able to begin them at all. Uh, I went from being unable to drag myself out of bed early enough to get to class on time to being unable to get out of bed full stop. Um, it grew worse and worse year after year, uh, especially for someone who growing up school was always an area that I excelled in. So, you know, I every failure, I felt the full weight of every failure, um, every late submission, every time I was late to class or didn't show up, um, the mental torture was constant. 
so five years later, I had just incurred a fresh slew of Fs and uh, I was completely abs absent for the entire semester. And I, and I just knew I needed to, I just needed to stop. <laughs> I needed so badly to heal, um, to take the, the breath that I so clearly needed. Uh, so uh, in 2016, I officially decided I would take a break from school. And yeah, that's it. That's when I decided to take a break. Wow, so you mean <coughs> all along you were actually in and out of uni, but you were struggling to cope. Yeah, wow. the whole time, yeah. And you didn't go to ask for help from your professors. I was too ashamed. It was, it, it took, I just couldn't handle it. Um, the reality, it, it took a while for it to sink in that I really was doing so badly. And, and so, for someone who had taken pride in doing well at school, who taken for granted, actually beyond even taking pride, I just taken for granted that I could do it. You know, if you if you walk all the time, <laughs> you take for granted that you can just walk in your own strength until you sprain your ankle or something, and and you realize actually, you know, that you're not the source of your ability to walk. So, uh, doing well at school, I just couldn't I couldn't even admit it to my parents, like the full extent to which I was failing. Um, not to talk of talking to anyone about it. So I was really dealing with that personally for a very long time um, until I decided, you know what, like I'm not fooling anyone. I just need to, I need some time. Yeah. So what's happened after you dropped off? What were you doing with yourself? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think uh, later that year after I had decided to officially leave school. I had um, one of the worst and the scariest uh, depressive episodes. Um, I went two weeks straight um, or more, just locked up in my room, unable to get out of bed. I just, two weeks straight, I was in bed. Um, I even couldn't even show up to work and they called my parents like to find out like what was going on with me. I just, radio silence from me all of a sudden. Um, it felt like I was stuck at the bottom of a very deep pit. Um, and when I finally resurfaced, I, I just became so angry at depression. <laughs> I was, I just could, I just, I was done. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to fight this with everything in me. Uh, so I quit everything. I quit my job. I quit every responsibility that had been hanging over my head. Um, and I decided to just focus on living, to figure out what it's, what it was like to live again, to, to look forward to life. Um, to spend my days actually conscious, not you know stuck in bed in fetal position in my mental torture chamber. <laughs> um, so I would even repeat to myself over and over again, more conscious hours, just more hours awake. Uh, so I had to relearn the basics, how to take care of myself, how to eat well, move my body, exercise, stretch. Um, I would create playlists and listen to them. Uh, unfortunately, I was trying to do all this in my own strength. So, you know, I took on coping mechanisms that were actually traps. Um, like I was doing yoga, smoking weed to give myself something to look forward to in the morning. Um, it started out, you know, beautiful, but over a long period of time, you could see that it was draining me. Like you could see it physically. I became unrecognizable. <laughs> um, you know, I entered into another dark place. I remember I moved out that time as well. You know, I wanted to, uh, I, I felt like I needed an environment that I created for myself. I needed my own life. I wanted to find my own people. I wanted to figure out life on my own terms. Uh, I got a, a job, you know, a full-time job in, at the back end of a kitchen, which is a different, <laughs> that's just a different way to see life really it's um you know i lived in this beautiful ap apartment close to downtown but i just i had no joy i had no peace um i was functional again i was active but i i was so unrooted and, and isolated and vulnerable and spiritually poor um, and it was telling, you could see it, like I was completely drained. And so I knew I couldn't continue like this. And that's when I was like, you know what, I need to go back to school. Like, is this the best job? Like I can't afford to work like this, work myself to the ground. So um, I knew I needed to go back to school, but I just couldn't figure out how to do that. I didn't, I wasn't sure if I could, like it just, the mess was so, I felt like I had, I was in the deep end in terms of school. I had no idea how I would even try. 
Uh, so yeah, that, that was kind of my in-between time. Um, it must have been a, a real courageous step to actually go back and face academics again, given the way you felt when you left. So that we'd like to find out how you faced that and hit yeah. it head on yeah. and, you know, how you eventually did exceptionally well. Mm. Yeah, I think the simple, the simple answer is that God saved me. Amen. Um, Amen. That's the simple answer. Because I've just told you the story of how I tried to fix myself on my own and ended up in a different dark place, right? Um, he saved my life. He saved my mind, saved my soul. Uh, oh. I had a moment where I lost everything. I hit rock bottom very literally. Um, even lost my sanity, experienced anxiety on a new, more sinister level. Um, but in that place of desperation, I, I finally realized I couldn't do it on my own. And it was, it was a very, I'll never forget, I was on the floor in my apartment and I said a very simple prayer. Because even in that space, I had begun to even doubt that, you know, I had, I was like, I turned away from God completely. So, you know, I was thinking about spirituality and in different areas, in different ways, like maybe Jesus isn't the only way to God and all this, all the, all these ideas, all these new age ideas. Um, and so in that Were moment- Were you involved in any kind of cults? Really? No, I wasn't, I wasn't involved in a cult, but I was definitely around a lot of people who practiced. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I was on the floor there and I just, <laughs> I even had some Oracle cards, like, you know, praying to some kind of whatever, wow. like protection, whatever. But I was so desperate that I, I just put that down and I was like, you know what, to the most high God. Hmm whoever you are, please save me. And just that little prayer over the next course of days and weeks, like my whole life turned upside down, but in the best way possible because awesome. it awesome. pulled me out of everything. And I ended awesome. up in my parents' place. Um, and yeah, so it was that encounter. I, I came home and I was just recovering because I was just completely drained. I, I saw you later that year as well. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> and I remember, sorry, I remember you, you asked me, you know, how are you? And I was like, I'm recalibrating, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah. So I spent some time at home and then, you know, the next year was 2019 in the, in the spring, sorry, in the, in the summer, I decided to, you know, to finally take that step, I, I went back to school. Um, I was still very unsure of everything that was ahead, but I had a new hope in me this time. Um, the hope that I didn't have, you know, all those years, I had it in me now because um, I knew that I wasn't doing this alone. I was with God the whole time. And, and it was that hope that made me brave. Like I said, right in the speech, it was the hope that made me brave enough to try. Um, brave enough to get out of bed and you know have a day um i wasn't depending on my strength or my instincts and um you know i could start my assignments now and i could finish you know i could study uh, i didn't miss class and and i this time I, I did not take a single thing for granted like every time i woke up in time and i was on the bus early making it to class i was like thank you god every assignment that i no, every class that I, after coming out of class, thank you, God, I made it to class today. I sat through the whole class. Like, thank you, God, I, I've just finished this assignment. No matter how small it was, I was like, thank you, God. So for, I finished an assignment. <laughs> Uh, you know things that you take for granted like oh yeah like none of that I couldn't take any of that for granted anymore um I submitted my assignment wow I got my grade back thank you God and then my transcripts like a plus a plus a I was uh, like thank you God you know things uh, I'm taking for granted prior to university I was just I was in awe of God for every every pass every win um, and so here I am, you know, two years, literally precisely two years after uh, I have my degree. Um, and awesome. I know it's, I, on, I awesome. know I have only awesome. God, I think. Yeah, it's God. So, so, what advice, you know, I'm sure there are some young people um, listening to this and wondering, you know, okay, I'm sure, you know, there's nothing new under the face of the sun. There might be somebody somewhere going through what they're going through right now. So what kind of advice would you give to the person 
-hmm. wanting to go into uni, somebody wanting to go into uni for the first time or somebody who's dropped out mm -hmm. of uni for some time, what kind of advice would you want to give to them to help them you know, get their lives back? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the first thing I would say is um, ask for help if you need it. Um, I don't think, I think the, the pressure to think that you have to do it all yourself and figure it out all by yourself, it's such a lie. Uh, no one <laughs> is alive today without the help of someone else, no matter what it is, no matter what area of your life. So ask for help, ask for the help you need. Don't pretend to have it all together if you don't, because you're just limiting how much help you can get. Um, so, and, and in every area, in every way possible. So whether it's being open with whoever's around you, that's a safe, you know, a safe place, letting them know, you know, what you're struggling with, what kind of help you need. Um, if you need help from, you know, with, in terms of a mental health professional, ask for help for that. Um, if you need help with, anything and I think even spiritually specifically spiritually um ask God for help like the turning point in this story in my story was that moment when I asked I, I made this desperate plea to the most high God to please help me even though at that time I wasn't talking specifically about school I just you know mentally everything um um, I needed help and God helped me and, and brought me back to a place where it was even possible for me to go to school in a way that was uh, functional. So yeah, please ask for help, ask God for help, ask your parents, your brother, your sister, your family members, uh, professionals. Um, another thing that really helped was I was talking to the school administration. So uh, counselors, like uh, counselors that are there for you, your department counselors, your uh, program counselors who are there to literally just help you figure it out as many emails as it takes or as many meetings or sit downs as it takes uh talk to them ask for help i think that's the biggest thing <laughs> um yeah ask for help i think that's the biggest awesome. thing I and i think one important takeaway from this is okay it's taking you 10 years to get your degree but you got it in the end and that's the most important thing that's why we must never give up never lose hope that oh no it was oh, no i can't it's, mm. I, I'm too far gone. No, you are never too far gone. Right. No matter where you are, it took her 10 years to get a four year, but she got her life. So that's the most important thing. So wherever mm -hmm. you are watching this, it's never too late. You can still make it. Mm. I hope that you have been blessed. Thank you so much, Amaka, for coming to share your story with us. Right. We just, we rejoice with you. Can see your face is glowing. <laughs> I know that you know. Have you figured out your next move at the moment? Mm. Um, I, I wouldn't say I've figured it all out, um, but this time I have a clarity that I didn't have, you know, when I was confused back then, uh, awesome. because I know where to go to for help. I know who my source is, and that's God. Um, and I know that God is, you know. So right now, my plan <laughs> is to spend a year figuring out my plan. Um, and just being clear before I make my next yes. move in terms, because school is expensive, let's be honest, right? So, um, yeah, so I'm just spending the year uh, just asking God for help, asking, me to, asking him to make clear for me what my next step is. And I'm very sure, I have no doubt in me <laughs> uh, that in a year I'll know where a, a, a good step to take in terms of my education, so. Awesome. Well, Amaka, it has been a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming. And I um, want to thank our viewers for watching. I hope you have all been blessed. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We're happy to know that Amaka got her life back and is thankful to God for her restoration. She's now looking forward to what God has in store for her future. You heard how she asked for help when, she, when it became necessary. Champions never give up and they're never afraid to ask for help. Perhaps you're a student watching this and going through some challenging situations or struggling in any particular area. Don't hesitate to ask for help from the right people. I hope you'll watch my next video in which I shall be interviewing another champion whose circumstances 
are much different from our markets, but there'll be something to learn about how to be a champion. Please like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you have been inspired by Amaka's story. Thanks for watching. God bless.